Hey guys, today we're going to talk about frontal conditions and how they affect fishing. Stay tuned. are new to the channel I'm Tackle Junkie 81's wife I was a former stem director at a private school and I'm just an overall science enthusiast I really enjoy learning about it and studying it I've done some prior videos on his channel before just talking about different things like barometric pressure which I'll link that video down below because it's gonna be important for this one and I've also done some on moon phases and the turnover and just other things about how either the weather or conditions can affect your fishing. So I'll link some of those down below. Definitely check those out. So the question has come up on the channel recently about pre and post frontal conditions and how that affects bass fishing. Now I am by no means a meteorologist. There are so many things that go into play whenever you look at pre and post frontal conditions and just what a front is, the different types of fronts and everything else. But typically when you hear the term front or a weather front, it's two air masses that are colliding with one another. So warm air and cold air, okay? Well, if you remember from your middle school days, maybe your middle school science days, hot air rises and cold air sinks. And that's because hot air is less dense than cold air. So when they come in contact with each other, that warm air is going to rise and that cold air is going to sink. When that warm air rises, that's where you have the formation of clouds, a storm, and also lower pressure is going to come in as well. Now remember I said earlier that I was going to link that video on barometric pressure. I also talk about hydrostatic pressure, which is the pressure beneath um, or within a column of fluid. Okay, so watch that video so you understand some of the terms that I'm talking about in this video. So on those lower pressure days, again, you're going to have clouds. Uh, you may have a chance for some form of precipitation or a storm. So how do these changes in pressure affect fish? Well, fish have what is known as a swim bladder. A swim bladder is a gas filled sac. So if we think of this gas filled sac, okay, a fish's swim bladder, if I think of it in terms as a balloon, it may help you kind of understand what's happening to a fish whenever there are pressure changes. So if you think back to your high school <laughs> chemistry days, you know that Boyle's law states that pressure and volume at a constant temperature have what is called an inverse relationship. Okay, what this means is as pressure increases, so as you're pushing pressure down on something, okay, that pressure is increasing, the volume decreases, so the volume becomes smaller. Now as pressure decreases, so it lessens, that volume increases, so it becomes larger, okay? So if we think of a balloon, say I filled up a, a balloon, just your general balloon, and I go diving with that balloon. As I dive down into the water, the pressure of the water, the hydrostatic pressure is going to push down on that balloon. And the volume of that balloon is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, the gas inside of the balloon, that never changed. I still have the same amount of molecules when that balloon's volume is shrinking as I did before I ever even jumped into the water when I was still outside of the water. The amount of molecules of gas is the same. Okay, so what that means is, remember gas is going to occupy the space that it's in, which means that it's going to move about and occupy whatever volume or whatever space it is in. Okay, so when the balloon is outside of the water and it's at its normal volume, those gas molecules, are, they have more room. They're bouncing around, okay? As I jump in the water and that pressure starts pushing on that balloon and it causes that balloon to start shrinking or decreasing its volume, those gas molecules now have less room to move about, okay? But I still have the same amount of gas. All right, so in a fish's swim bladder, as a low pressure system moves in, that low pressure 
is going to increase the volume of their swim bladder. Therefore, you're gonna find them more shallow, okay? Because it's increasing the volume, okay? It's increasing the size. So in order for them to maintain their neutral buoyancy, they're generally gonna to have to go up a little more shallow. Now, as that low pressure system moves through, okay, and it's passed, that pressure is gradually rising on the backside or the post frontal condition, therefore increasing the pressure on the swim bladder of the fish. So as it increases that pressure on the swim bladder of the fish, it's going to cause it to be smaller and it's gonna cause it to sink, okay, in order for it, again, to maintain that neutral buoyancy. So this can cause some discomfort for the fish. This can make it a little more finicky. So that's why in your prefrontal conditions, as that pressure begins to lower, as that system is moving in, the fish are more shallow, they're, um, it's cloudy conditions, they're moving around more, and as that, pressure, as that system moves out and that pressure is gradually increasing, they're a little more uncomfortable. Okay, so it's gonna take them a little bit time to readjust to those pressure changes and get back to their normal behaviors. So overall, you're gonna have better luck fishing in those prefrontal, low pressure, overcast, cloudy days where the fish are gonna be more shallow than you are in those post-frontal, higher pressure, bluebird sky type conditions where the bass are gonna be a little more uncomfortable a little more finicky, and they're also going to be deeper, again, because that pressure is pushing on that swim bladder. Guys, Tackle Junkie likes to keep it as simple as possible. So if it's cloudy, he's going to fish a reaction type bait. If it's sunny, he's going to slow it down because he knows they're going to be tighter to cover, and he's going to fish a soft plastic or a jig. Of course, you guys need to fish and adjust to the conditions you're fishing in. There is so much more that goes into play than just high versus low pressure or the different moon phases or anything else like that temperature wind all those things play a role than just your standard high versus low pressure so learn your bodies of water understand where the fish are start noticing different patterns that they have whenever you do have any weather moving in and the different behaviors that they have keep it as simple as possible just like tackle junkie does it's cloudy, fish those reaction type baits. If it's sunny, slow it down a little, fish that soft plastic or a jig. And remember, if you learn your bodies of water that you're fishing on, then you're gonna catch them eventually because nobody wants the W. And that's not a W for a winner, that's a W for wadded. Nobody wants that. <laughs> Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a little bit more from it. Again, remember to check out all the links of the videos and articles I mentioned below. And please smash that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one.